what we want is to generate a question like this. So this is going to be a multiplication operation consisting of two numbers, each of them between 1 and 10. So what we're going to do, we are going to generate a number between 1 and 10 and store it in a variable x. And then we're going to generate another number between 1 and 10 and store it in another variable y. And then we are going to store the products of x and y inside another variable that we're going to call correct answer. And then we are going to change the inner HTML of this box using x and y and this multiplication operator. And also we are going to place the correct answer in one of these four boxes. So we'll need to choose a random number between 1 and 4. So if our number is 3, then we place the correct answer in box number 3, for example. Okay? So in this case, for example, the correct answer is in box number 3. In this case, it's box number 4. All right. And regarding the other boxes, we're going to fill them with wrong answers. All right, let's start with our variable x. So if we use the function random or the method random of math, then we are going to get a number between 0 and 1, strictly less than 1. What we want here is a number between 1 and 10. So if we multiply this by 10, then we're going to get a number between 0 and 10 strictly. If we use the function math.round, if you remember, this function is going to round whatever parameter we give to it to the nearest integer. So, for example, if we get 5.6 there, then the function round is going to return 6 to us. If we get 1.3, then it's going to return 1. If we get 0 0.4, it's going to return 0. 9.4, it's going to return 9. Well, we want x to be between 1 and 10. So we wouldn't accept 0, for example. All right. So we're going to use a nice trick here. So rather than multiplying this by 10, we're going to multiply it by 9. So now we're getting a number between 0 and 9. And we're going to add 1 to this number. And now we are sure that we are getting something between 1 and 10. Alright, let's create another variable, y, also between 1 and 10. And we say that the other variable, which is correct answer, is the product of x and y. Well, we're going to need this variable when we click on the boxes. And since clicking on a box is going to happen outside this function, then we are going to place this variable correct answer outside this function. So I'm going to declare this variable at the beginning of the code. All right. And then use it inside this code. Because otherwise, once we go out of this function, then we can't use this variable anymore if we define it inside the function. Okay, so now we've got our variable x and our variable y, and we've got the correct answer. So we say that now we're going to change the inner HTML of this element to x multiplied by y. So let's do that. So this element has got an ID question. So we're going to access it using its ID, which is question. 
and we are going to change the inner HTML to X and then we add to that the multiplication sign and then we add to that Y. Just remember, when we add numbers and strings, then everything becomes strings. Now let's choose a random position where we're going to place our random or our correct answer. So we're going to choose a number between 1 and 4. So to do that, we're going to use the same method we used earlier. So our variable is going to be correct position. And rather than multiplying math.random by 9, we're going to multiply it by 3. So we get, we get a number between 0 and 3. And then once we add 1, that becomes between 1 and 4. Now let's place the correct answer inside the box corresponding to the correct position that we have just generated. So if we look at our index.html file, we'll see that all the boxes, they have IDs, box followed by a number. So if our correct position is 3, for example, then we want to place the correct answer in box 3. And we're going to use its ID for this. So we're going to use document get elements by ID. So if we want to use box 3, then the ID is box 3. But we want to use the correct position for this. So we're going to use box and we're going to add to that the position. So rather than adding 3, we're going to add the correct position. Just like that. And then we are going to change the inner HTML of this element to the correct answer. Let's add a comment here. Fill one box with the correct answer. Alright, now we are going to move to the other boxes and we're going to fill them with wrong answers. So to do this, we are going to cycle through all these boxes and we will fill them with wrong answers. But we are going to check if the box that we're looking at is the initial box that has got the good answer. So to do this, we're going to use a for loop. So our parameter is going to be i and first of all, we are going to check if i is not equal to the correct position. And then in that case, we are going to generate a wrong answer and place it in the box. So i is going to start at 1 and we want it to be less than 5 and every time we increase this by 1. So i is going to go from 1 to 4. So if i is not equal to the correct position then what we're going to do we are going to create a variable wrong answer so this variable is going to be the product of two random numbers between 1 and 10. All right. So let's use this code. And paste it in there. So this is going to be a wrong answer. Now, 
now we'll need to place the wrong answer in the box corresponding to the position i. So to do this, we are going to access the box using its id. So the id of the box is going to be box plus i. So if i is 2, for example, then rather than writing box 2, it's going to be box plus 2. And that's going to give us box 2. And then we'll change the inner HTML of this box. To wrong answer. So if we save and try this, now we can see all the boxes filled with answers. So that's the correct answer, and all the other ones they've got wrong answers. If we reset the game and try again, we see again, again. Just one comment before we continue. The comparison operator that we use there, it means not equal value or not equal type. Because we're using two equal signs. If we use only one equal sign, this means not equal value. And that's all we need. Just a quick review. If we use two equal signs like this, this means equal value and three equal signs means equal values and equal types. In our case, we are looking at the value only and we're going to check whether they are different. So it's going to be exclamation mark followed by only one equal sign. So we are looking at the values. Okay, so now we want to make sure that all the wrong answers, they are different from the correct answer. So to do this, before placing a wrong answer inside a box, we are going to check that that wrong answer is different from the correct answer. So when we are generating the wrong answer, we are going to do that check. So first of all, we are going to declare our variable wrong answer. And then after that, we are going to set the variable wrong answer to the random number here. But we need to check if this wrong answer is equal to the correct answer. So if it's equal to the correct answer, we will need to gener generate another wrong answer and then check again. And if it's equal to the correct answer, we need to generate another one. So we're going to keep generating wrong answers until we get a number that is different from our correct answer. So this is reminding us of a while loop. So what we're going to do, we're going to copy this code and place it inside a while loop. So the condition of our while loop is whether the wrong answer is equal to the correct answer. So as far as the wrong answer is equal to the correct answer, we are going to keep generating wrong answers. Okay? So if we try this, if we save and start our game, the problem is that all the wrong answers are going to be undefined. And the reason why is from the very beginning our condition here is not verified because we're starting with a variable wrong answer that is undefined. So we never get here and we never generate a random number for our wrong answer variable. So what we're going to do rather than using this form of the while loop we're going to use another form. So we will start first by executing this code and then checking the condition. So to do this, we're going to keep our statement checking the condition, but we are going to generate a random answer before the while condition. And that's going to be using the do statement. So the syntax is do followed by curly brackets. And then inside the brackets, we are going to paste our code. Okay, so if we save this and 
refresh, then this is working. And we can see that we've got our correct answer there. And we can verify that all the time the wrong answers, they are different from the correct answer. So we'll never get a wrong answer that is equal to the correct answer. Okay, so what's happening here is that we will execute this code at least once. And then we do our first check. Okay, now we want something different. We want to make sure that all the wrong answers are different. So we don't want any two equal wrong answers. So there are different ways of doing this. The way I'm going to go for is as following. I suggest you do your own way and then you can compare to the way that I will go for. So, before going inside the for loop, I'm going to create an array. I'm going to call it answers. So, this array is going to contain all the answers that we have, including the correct answer. So what's going to happen is that we will fill this array first with the correct answer. And then as we are filling the boxes, any new value we generate for one box, we will place it inside this array. And then every time we want to place a value inside a box, we will check if that value is in our array already or not. So. Let's start. First of all, the first item we're going to place inside our array is going to be one item, which is the correct answer. And then we're going to go inside our for loop. Okay. 